Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my blog. All right. Okay. So uh, a few weeks back, I talked about how Zell and I were kind of my first LGBTQ plus characters on sort of a technical uh, level because they are some of the older characters that I that I have that I still sort of uh, do things with. Um, so it's like they were created first, even though they weren't necessarily initially envisaged as being uh, LGBTQ+. Um, you know, it was one of those things that when I actually kind of went back and started the editing process, I kind of realised that, that they were just based on the subtext <laughs> that I hadn't realised was there. Um, so those might have been, they might have been my, like, technically my first ones, um, but my my actual first ones uh, started appearing in, in my fanfics. Um, <laughs> so I wanted, sort of like when I was sort of like thinking about doing this, um, as well, I'm talking about my, my actual first LGBTQ plus characters, I was like, oh yeah, it's a Tales, it's a Tales saga. And um, the first time I sort of had LGBTQ plus characters, they weren't technically my own. But within the same series, I did have my some of my OCs who were also LGBTQ+. Um, and then just before um, just before I sat down to do this, I sort of I was sort of I went shopping. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get back from shopping, and then I'm gonna film this one. And this is like the topic that I decided that I was going to to do today. Um, and then I remembered my my South Park fanfics. <laughs> So, uh, technically, yes, I did start writing the, um, the Tale Saga uh, first. Um, I think I just said it was the YF, but I, I mean the Tale Saga. Um, I'm thinking about the YF because of, of something else I'm doing at the moment, but no, the, the Tale Saga. Um, I, I definitely started the first book in that before I wrote my my South Park fanfics. Um, but the one there are there there wasn't any kind of LGBTQ plus stuff going on in that first um, the first book of Tell Saga. So technically speaking when I say the the South Park one came first, I'm I'm not wrong and it was an OC um, within that as well um so yeah that and, and it's, it's weird because i don't really talk about my south park fanfics in in any of my vlogs even though my south park fanfics were the first things that i ever put out in front of a wider audience um as it were and, and they did actually do quite well um i mean I'm, <laughs> I, I i don't tend to think about them i haven't thought about them in a long time they're not necessarily anywhere near my current writing <laughs> standard <laughs> and uh stuff that has happened in the recent series uh of south park has kind of meant that i'm so off base with like you no know, like at the point in time that i wrote those um certain things hadn't been revealed in the show so they kind of could have worked with the canon um, without breaking the canon. Uh, it's not like with the tail saga, which completely breaks the canon and ignores everything that happens after a certain point. <laughs> ignores everything that happens after Battle City. <laughs> um, and I know it, I know it's like a complete rewrite of the rest of um, the Yu Gi series. But with the, with the South Park one, at the point in time that I was writing it, it, um, it definitely definitely didn't clash with the, the canon of South Park. But more recent series have kind of meant that it now does. Um, but ha having said that, I wasn't, I mean, I was a fairly active member of South Park Studio whilst I was sort of posting the fic um, and for a good few years. Um, and then they sort of changed some of their um, uh, whatever and um, my account no longer sort of was able to access all the things that it, it used to be able to access. Um, 
So I kind of, I mean, I, I was sort of drifting more into the Yu-Gi-Oh forum at that point anyway. Um, and, and, you know, that's where I was spending all my time. So it's kind of like a cross between uh, lots of different things. I sort of stopped doing the, the, the stuff like CDO forum, <laughs> as it were. Um, one of the reasons why I haven't really thought about the, the characters that I, I'd created for that fic uh, in, in a long time. So, although I want to sort of acknowledge that my first crack at actually writing for LGBTQ plus characters was in a South Park fanfic, <laughs> because of course, um, I do actually want to focus more on um, the stuff that I did with the Tale Saga because that's where I really feel like I started to, to sort of really experiment and really um, think about what it was that I was doing um, with with the characters, whether they were my own characters or um, the actual characters from the show. Um, so my first my first pairing was a shipping of characters from the show. <laughs> Um, but I want to, I want to kind of, because I know, I know there's that sort of that fan thing that, um, that, you know, that fans ship characters and they write fix to just ship characters. And I was to ship Joey in my, <laughs> um, kind of, um, but you know, the, the, the Tao saga as a whole isn't really a, a ship thick. Um, and the, the two characters that I didn't end up um, shipping, and I'm not going to spoil it because it's kind of like a major sort of plot point that kind of goes through. Um, it's certainly in the, the reworking that I've done, and I believe there's still a link in the description for the Tale Saga, so if you want to check it out, please do. I mean, there are lots of like little errors and stuff that go through it, but um, for the most part, it is uh, it is pretty pretty good standard, um, I think. <laughs> anyway, um. Yeah, so um, the, the 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 shipping pair that I kind of did when I was sort of initially writing the tail saga, it wasn't actually a ship that I'd ever considered before. But from how I was doing the story and from the direction the story was kind of going in, um, it just seemed to work and sort of like in the original version I did, so this was a, the version that got posted to um, the Yu-Gi-Oh! fans forum um, the first time around. Um, there, there was not sort of much a reluctance to kind of confirm this shipping pair as it was kind of, I wasn't sure if I should ship these characters because I was kind of like, it's not a shipping that most people would think of. It's not one of your your, your big Yu-Gi-Oh ships um, that most people kind of go for. Um, the more I sort of, the more the sort of the, the story that I was telling with um, the Tale Saga kind of unfolded, the more they just made sense as a pair. Um, so when I did go through and do the big rewrite before posting it to uh, fanfic.net, which is which is what where it's linked below, if it is still in the description, I believe it is still in the description. Um, when I did sort of go back and do the big reworking, one of the things that I I did was I set that ship up a lot better um, because in in the, all the time that I'd sort of you know gone back in and done stuff with the series. Um, it was one of those ships that just made more and more and more sense and having it sort of set up properly and uh, having it sort of elements of it kind of working in from like the very first book in the story as well which wasn't as I said initially there um it's made a lot more sense it made it flow a lot better and it is really one of my my favorite couplings I mean it, <laughs> it shouldn't be <laughs> there is nothing to support it in the show proper <laughs> But um, it just made so much sense in the tail saga for these two characters to be to be shipped together. Um, and as I said, it, it was one of those things when I was sort of initially writing the the tail saga. Even though it it made so much sense in my head, 
it did take me a long time. And then that's part of the work, but the reason why there is still this sort of like very really slow build up to the confirmation of these characters being together. It feels earned, it feels more earned in, in how the, the stories are now than, than how they were before, where it wasn't set up quite as well, but it was sort of being set up. Um, but there was this sort of like this slow kind of process to it, partly because I know the people reading wouldn't instantly jump on this being a ship because it wasn't one of your standard Yu-Gi-Oh ships. Um, and partly because I was kind of like, will people kind of accept this as a, as a plot line? It makes sense to me based on all these things that I'm doing to these characters, but will the people that are reading this accept it? And I think for the most part they did. Um, which is why, you know, I mean, by the time I came to sort of like reworking the story, I'd stopped caring. <laughs> I was like, I love this ship, so other people will love it too. Um, but I, I kind of grew that confidence. I kind of gained that confidence. And I think, um, I think sort of having sort of like the characters kind of there and having to work within the personality traits that somebody else had sort of set up and still kind of making this relationship work um, was a really good stepping stone for me for um, cre uh, creating sort of my own LGBTQ plus characters uh, sort of going forward from that because um, one thing I, I kind of I hope I mean I don't know if I do completely because I don't think anybody can I don't think that a writer can completely avoid stereotyping in some aspects, um, just because you know that that you know certain things, certain ideas, and certain images are kind of just in your head anyway. And as hard as I try to not create stereotypes, and as hard as I try to make sure that my characters are characters first, even if they maybe have some of these elements that people kind of associate with certain things, I very much try to kind of build the character without creating a stereotype. Um, and I think sort of having my first sort of proper official LGBTQ plus characters being modified versions of somebody else's characters um, kind of helped me avoid some of that, um, or at least helped gear how my brain sort of thought about creating LGBTQ plus LGBTQ ah, LGBTQ. T, Q, plus. I, I know I keep forgetting letters here. It's really hard to keep saying it when you've got the, got the kind of brain that I do. I do apologise if I miss uh, any of the letters when I'm saying it. It's a long thing to have to say. And um, uh, from the, the, those of you who've watched uh, a number of my vlogs will know that I, you know, I do have um, fibromyalgia, which means I get fibro fog uh, a lot and I, I can't always get my words out a lot of the times when you see things that have been edited out of here it's because I literally couldn't get any words out <laughs> during that that space of time um, or I just got myself really muddled or I, I was using the wrong word for something uh, so I do apologize if I forget any of the letters when I'm saying it I'm trying hard not to um, and I do apologize if I do I'm not doing it on purpose, I swear. Um, <clears throat> but where was I? <laughs> I've tangented myself to a point where I don't remember where I, what I was talking about. Um, so well, whatever I was talking about, I will have to start it again. Um, so yeah, I, I try really hard when I'm creating LGBTQ plus characters to make sure that I'm creating a character first and then whatever their sexuality is, whatever their gender identity is, um, it's not secondary to the character, it's just a part of the character, it's an aspect of the character, it's not the character in its entirety, it's not just this thing that's been tagged onto the character, um, it's a part of who they are, but it's not the sum total of who they are. That's what I try to do when I'm creating LGBTQ plus characters. I, I try very much to sort of steer away from anything that I think, oh, people are gonna see that as being a stereotype and not as being a character, because I want my characters to, to feel like they could be actual people. So that's why I try really hard to sort of make sure I'm creating like really around characters and as weird as it sort of seems, sort of um, 
modifying somebody else's characters first as being a good stepping stone into kind of learning how to do that i i think that it is a good stepping stone into learning how to do that if you can i mean it's all to do with sort of reading the text and reading that, like the subtext and seeing things there that maybe aren't necessarily 100 percent intended and you know it's one of those things i do encourage people to do when they're reading my work to see if there's maybe other interpretations there if there are things going on that are more relevant to you that maybe i haven't necessarily thought about in so many words um because it, it's just, you know, if, if you can sort of see and open your mind to a greater number of, of possibilities um, and a greater number of options, then you're going to create more diverse characters almost by default. Um, which I know maybe is a weird way of, of sort of thinking about it, but um, I, I think it works. I think it works in, in principle a lot as well. Um, and I'm hoping it works in practice. I hope that I don't create sort of stereotypes when I'm creating characters, just in general. Like, regardless of anything else, I, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not creating stereotype characters, just in general. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I, I apologise for my massive loss of chain of thoughts um, during this one. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that will remain in and how much of that I'll have to edit out just because it caused me to lose my place a little bit. Um, I'm hoping you guys, because like, I mean, I, one, of, one of the things I sort of thought after I'd uh, filmed the last one was I'd put this emphasis on... Um, Orion and Zell being my first LGBTQ plus characters um, without kind of stating that they weren't my only ones. Um, they, they are technically my first ones because they are technically the characters I created first, but they weren't the first actual ones that I actually wrote and actually put out there. Um, so I'm hoping this will sort of clarify that a little bit if nothing else. <laughs> All right, okay, so um, I hope you found this rather muddled vlog interesting. <laughs> I hope I will make more sense with the next one than I do, um, and I hope to see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.